This video is for people who have never coded before, but want to leverage the fact that AI has made coding so approachable that really anyone can do it. And I've honestly thought for years that if smart people who don't know how to code just learn the basics, they could 10x their productivity by automating a lot of their daily tasks. And now with AI, the barrier to entry is so much lower that really everyone should learn these skills. So first, I'm gonna take you through a basic setup of what you need to know to get started. Then we're gonna walk through three different projects of varying difficulties, and I'm gonna show you three different ways that you could use AI to write and run code. The first question we have to answer is what programming language we should use. And to me, the answer is very clear, Python. Python's easy to read, easy to learn, and it's extremely popular. The fact that it's popular doesn't mean much on its own, but what it does mean is there are a lot of resources out there for coding in Python and additional packages that might help you solve whatever problem you're trying to solve. And on top of that, all the large language models have been trained on all this information out there about Python, so they're really good at using it. So we know we're gonna use AI to help us write some code in Python, but how do we actually run and execute that code? There are a whole number of ways you could run Python code, and I'm not gonna go into each in detail. I do have another video that talks about these topics that you can look at, but I feel like if you're learning something new, try the simplest approach first and then go from there. And what I think is one of the easiest ways to just run and execute some Python code is by using Google Colab. And as long as you have a Google account, you can go to Google Colab and start creating notebooks. You could think of a notebook as sort of a Word document, but for code, where you can run it now, or you could save it and run it later. So I'm gonna go here to create a new notebook in my Google Drive. And now I have a way of writing and executing Python code in the cloud, and I didn't have to set up a thing. To get started in the notebook, let's rename it. And now we can quickly add these different cells that are either used for code or for writing some text or documentation. Let's focus on code first. Now you can see that I've clicked code. I can actually write Python code in here. The simplest program that everyone always writes is hello world. And then I can run this cell by pressing this play button. And you can see the output of what the code ran. This code prints some information about Python that we're running. We're gonna have most of our code generated by a large language model. And our intention here isn't to become expert programmers, but just to be able to write some functional code that can get the job done. So we're taking the simplest route to learn how to write this code. We've decided we're gonna use Python. And at first we're gonna use Google Colab to actually execute that code. The next question is, which model are we gonna to use to produce our code? Really, there are a lot of options out there and it doesn't matter as much as it used to, but ChatGPT is always a good go-to and Claude is also one of the best models out there for generating code. I personally dish out the money for the paid version of ChatGPT and Claude, but even the free versions will produce great code for you to get started with simple tasks. Let's get an example from each just to see how the code looks when it's generated by the large language models. First, let's start with ChatGPT. I've asked it to show us an example that would be good for explaining how it can create code. Obviously, we gave it a lot of leniency here just to show us an example. But the main thing I wanna show you here is that it does do a good job of showing us the code in a different type of format. Now, we could copy and paste this all over into our Colab notebook or we have this copy code button that we can just click and now it's copied to our clipboard. So going back over here to our notebook, I'm just gonna put a title in here. And now with our chat GPT code in our clipboard, I'm just gonna control V and paste it into here. It looks like chat GPT's created a program where we're trying to guess a number between one and a hundred. So why don't I hit play here and we can try to guess the number. Hey, I got on the fifth try, not too bad. Now I'm over here in Claude and I'm gonna ask it the same thing that I asked ChatGPT. And we can see Claude here, similar to ChatGPT, has created some code that we can scroll through. We can see that it's explained that it's 
made a, a functional game. We can copy this code and I can paste it in here and we can give this a run and make sure that it works. It looks like it's an explorer game and we can look at different things giving one, two, three. And now if I wanted to stop this code from running, I can just click the stop button and it'll kick us out of that program as it's running. So now let's jump into some example projects of something you potentially might be working on that you could write a script with that will help automate it for you. And the first example I have is just a basic data scraper. Let's say that your boss has told you to pull information from some website and format it in such a way that you can scroll through it in a spreadsheet. Kind of a silly example, I know, but we're gonna take this Hacker News website and see if we can just get a simple program that'll pull all the titles from this website and save it into a CSV file. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with and then we can start to debug or go back and forth with it. I told her I wanted to write a Python script that will take this website and produce a CSV of all the titles. Now it is gonna recommend installing some dependencies, but we don't have to worry about that because we are running in Colab and most of these are already installed. And then I can just take this code, make a new code cell here in Colab, and let's try to run this. Now we see it says that it's returned zero titles from the website. And this might be because it's not actually, it doesn't understand enough information about the website to pull. So let's just tell it that and see what it comes back with. So I told it that no titles were being returned, which is obviously wrong, and asked if there's any information I could provide it that might help. And it gave me this code snippet, which now I can actually run in another cell. I read in this code as it asked for, and then copy and pasted this into my question. It's updated the code, so let's give this a run. And now we see it found 30 titles and saved it as this news titles file. Google Colab will let us just double click on this and we can see that these are all the titles from the website that I was trying to pull. The cool thing about this is now I can go back and have it update this code to make it more improved. So I said this only has 30 titles, I want 100. Let's paste over our code with this new version. And now we see it saved 100 titles. Let's go over and check the file just to make sure. See, it goes all the way down to 100. Let's take this one step further. So I'm asking it now to actually save more information than just the title. So if there's any additional metadata, I'm asking it to pull that and add it to my CSV file. And it looks like it saved this into a different CSV file called Hacker News Articles, which I can double click and we can see it did save all this additional information and we didn't really have to write one line of code. So if it was your job to do something tedious like this and you didn't know how to write a program to do it automated, just with a few queries with ChatGPT and a little bit of tweaking, we got a working code that we could run and we have this file that we could easily download and save to our computer. Onto our second example, we're gonna move away from using Colab for this example and actually run this on my local machine. So in this example, we have a bunch of images that we might wanna reformat, add a watermark to, or do something interesting to. So I've actually downloaded a couple images from a free website that hosts images. And let's see if we can write a script that will edit these. So for this one, let's use Claude. So I'm telling it that I have a folder full of JPEG images that I want cropped to 500 by 500 pixels and then also that I want them to convert it to a PNG format. Now we are gonna be running this script locally, so you might have to get Python set up for your own machine, but just to show you as an example, I'm gonna take this script and I'm gonna save it as a .py file in that folder, which I can then run. And now I know in my terminal, I can go into this folder and run this watermark Python script and run this Python script, but I, but I see it comes up with an error saying that these Im this image folder is not does not exist. It's not too uncommon to come into an error like this. So let's just go back, paste it here into Claude and see what it comes up with. So now it's gonna update to be more user friendly. Try rerunning this. It's saying input images does not exist. 
So we know that the input images are actually just in the root folder. So I can delete this input images. You retry again. And now we can see that it's run and it saved all these JPEGs into an output images folder and their PNG files. So let's look at the output images folder. They're all cropped, resized, and look great. So I'm gonna tell it this works great, but I also wanna add a big RM watermark into the file. And let's see if it can do that. We'll copy and paste the results into our script and save. Go back and rerun. Remove this input images directory. And now if we go into our files, sure enough, they all have a big RM watermark on them just like I asked for. And that took almost no time at all. So far I've showed some simple examples of running code in Colab, writing some code that you run locally. And for our third example, I'm gonna show how we can make an interactive website for exploring data and actually use a IDE or a program that'll help us interact with the AI called Cursor. Now there's some other um, IDEs out there that do similar things, but this is just to show you now that we've done the very simple approach, the more advanced way of interacting with large language models when writing code. So for this example, we're gonna download this CSV file that I actually created a few years ago from Kaggle. It's a CSV file with a bunch of different data about roller coasters. If I open it up, I can show you here that it has a bunch of different roller coaster names and uh, information about them. So I'm gonna start by creating a Python file in cursor that's in the same directory as the CSV file. And I'm gonna actually do control L, which will let me interact with the large language model. So now I don't have to open up a browser and chat with it. That way I can just chat with it here. Now the other cool thing about this is I can actually reference the coaster DB file when I'm asking it to create this dashboard. And the nice thing here is I don't even have to copy and paste. I can just click the apply button and it'll go ahead and create this file for me and all the edits. It even shows me what command I need to run in the terminal to get this to start. And now we have an extremely basic dashboard here. Let's see if we could get this a little bit, show more information. So I'm gonna ask it to add a comparison plot between two of the features. Let's go ahead and apply this to the file, save. And there we go, we see that we do have a dashboard where we see some of the information about the different roller coasters. This is obviously a very basic example, but you can imagine customizing a website or a dashboard to exactly what your data is, adding drop down menus, all of that. You could just chat with the model and you can continuously be updating your script and saving it as you go. This was obviously a very basic introduction into how you can use AI to write code even if you don't know how to code yet. The hope is that you'll eventually become better and better at coding, understanding what it does, but the truth is if you're not gonna code anyways, you might as well leverage AI to help you do some of the simple tasks. I hope this helps. If it does, let me know in the comments what sort of projects you wanna use AI to write code for. See you next time.